It's amazing. It's amazing how great our God is and how wonderful he is toward us. And I'm just sitting here just marveling at the power of God, not only in my life, in the lives of men everywhere. Tonight, we just want to speak a few minutes about something that we we gather on this line on Tuesday. And those of you who have not ever joined in with the Citywide Brotherhood and Women's Uplift Prayer Services on Saturday morning, uh, would that you would join in and we get to that information, how you can, to prayer. And I've been thinking about prayer, not only today, not only yesterday, but I think about prayer quite a bit. Our constant, it keeps us in constant communication with our God. Prayer. How we have to pray. Tonight's lesson is just a brief uh, remembrance or bring to our remembrance the importance of prayer. First Thessalonians chapter 5 uh, talks about prayer. Chapter 5, verse 17. And then verse 16 starts like, rejoice always. Then verse 17 says, pray without ceasing. And verse 18 says, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Pray without ceasing. And I'm, we were looking at this, we know that the posture of prayer is many. You can, you can stand, you can kneel, you can bow. Uh, I was brought up that when we were praying, that mom would tell us first to get down and kneel by the bed and we get on our knees and pray. And I was brought up in the church where the deacons would open up church with prayer on their knees. And in prayer meeting nights back in the day when I grew up, they would pray. When you were in prayer service, you'd fall on your knees off one of them old pews. And it didn't matter how some of those old people, how they were, how old they were, they would get on their knees and honor God. In this scripture, Paul gives an encouragement to the Thessalonians. There were some things going on in Thessalonica. Paul exhorted the people to pray. And I looked at that word, exhortation. Exhortation simply means to address and communicate emphatically without any doubt, urging someone to do something. You know, and it comes from the Greek word paraklesis, paraklesis, which means to call to one side, call somebody over, to summon someone, to encourage someone, to admonish someone. I entreat you to entreat to get someone's attention is to exhort them, get their attention. But he says here that we should pray without ceasing. And I know, you know, we can't always, when we look at prayer, you know, can you walk around all day with a prayer to a mighty God who has blessed you uh, with everything, everything in life, with life itself? with a prayer on your lips. Is it impossible to do that? A prayer of thanksgiving. Uh, in my studies, I looked at how we could always constantly be in a in prayer of thanksgiving. You can pray in your car. You can pray on the bus. You can pray walking down the street. You can pray while you're walking around through Sam's and through uh, Kroger and anywhere. You can pray and be in Set your mind on prayer of thanksgiving. We're living in a very difficult, and you hear people talk about it, and I would that we could, <laughs> there's some things that, that I know that only prayer can solve. Prayer to a mighty God who, is, who does everything well and who can do anything but fail. We have to go to God in prayer. And in the studies that said you be not to just pray only for ourselves and only for our families. We must pray for mankind everywhere. No matter what condition that person is, it, we must pray for those. And I heard somebody tonight, and surely we must, because I inter I, I intercede seated for those who may be sleeping out. So it's cold out there, y'all. 
it's cold out there. And there may be some people who are who, who sleeping outdoors or under a bridge or sleeping under the, the a freeway, the highway. And we must intercede for them also and, and, and be sincere. Now, in, in this, Paul is telling the Thessalonians that we must be consistently, consistent in our prayer. We must be continually prayerful. We must be in a consistent, prayerful state of mind. And, and frequent, we must pray frequently. I mean, we don't just pray when it's time to go to bed. We don't we don't pray. We have a we have a a a, a total posture of prayer throughout the day. We got to intercede and we're living in a time when we need to pray all the time. There's so many things going on in our country in this world, but let's just take it right here in Houston, Texas. There's so many evil things. There's so many evil people that are doing some terrible things that we don't know when they're going to do it or when, but we hear about it in the morning. Someone has been murdered. Some woman has shot her husband or some man has shot and killed his wife in front of his children and beat up the children. They need prayer. And we can't say, well, I ain't praying for that. I've heard that too. I ain't going to take no time with God to pray for so and so. That's not your call. If you are a person who believes in the power of prayer, and you know, and, and you know what prayer does? Prayer, prayer is important because it makes us more like Jesus and because it reveals to us the heart and the mind of God. We can go to, to God with anything. I can hear the old old Christians say, uh, uh, I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. The light from heaven fill my soul. Fill my heart with love and wrote my name above just a little talk with Jesus. And that's why we gather here on Tuesday to, to have a little talk with Jesus about the situations of the world that uh, we can't do it. You know what? We have to pray for ourselves in before we begin the prayer because some of these things that's going on in our world will make you upset, will make you uncomfortable, will make you angry because there's some terrible things. going. There's some ter I, I, this is just me. I, there's some terrible people in our country doing some terrible things. And, and we need to be prayerful. God, God, would you help us please? Have mercy on that man or that woman who's doing whatever they think is right. And I, I looked at through some things and said, when we look at the spiritual powerhouse of the past, spiritual powerhouse writers, and preachers of the press. We know that prayer was immensely important. Uh, look at, uh, I looked at a statement by C.S. Lewis stated, I pray because I can't help myself. Isn't that something? He also said, I pray because the need flows out of me all the time. I have a need. And the only person that can answer my need or could meet me at the point of my need is Christ Jesus. You know, I pray he says, out of me all the time, walking and sleeping. I pray walking down the street. I said a minute ago, I pray driving in the car. I pray I have to go to God, but I have to also in my prayers, be constant, be consistent, be serious about it. I'm not on this prayer line because it's something we've been doing and it's Tuesday night. I'm on this prayer line because we need help from God. We need help from Christ Jesus. And he says here, uh, and then I looked at Martin Luther, the great theologian, and he says, I have so much to do that I shall spend the first three hours in prayer. You have been so busy that you need, even in your busy life, your busy day, you need to pray. Ask God, thank God for allowing you to get through that, that, that day. And looking at the context of these scriptures in First Thessalonians, and I love what it says. It says, pray without ceasing. But when we look at the context of the, the First Thessalonians, the Christians in Thessalonica were, were stressed out. And I'm going to ask you a question in, in my studies tonight, in our studies. 
Won't life and life situations and people that are in control or in in certain positions in our cities and in our states and our country, won't that their attitudes, won't that just stress you out? Don't they, won't that just make their situations in life that, that stress people out? And the only way we can deal with the stress of life is by talking to God. And these there's these Paul was talking to these Thessalonians because they were stressed out. Some things were going on and stressed out. They were alarmed and, 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 and troubled about what was going on, on and around them. In this chapter, chapter 5, Paul talks about the will of God. He has the will. He talks about exhortation. We need to uh, uh, believe Christ can do anything but fail. We must believe the word of God. And I heard it said tonight in the prayer, praise God for the prayer. Uh, I heard the, the, the person praying says, uh, the word of God says, uh, if my people, that word, if, that two letters, that's a big word. If you are people of God, if my people who are called by my name, the lumber you say, look after God, seek his faith. Then we got to, we got to make sure we can get in contact with God. We got to turn from some of this wickedness that we have in our own lives. Turn away from, then God will hear from us. He, the ultimate is that he will hear. He will hear. And he will heal the land. Now, anybody that's on this line, anybody that's a Christian, call themselves a Christian, if you don't think this land, all over the land, not only in in Russia, in Afghanistan, or in uh, Syria. Not only, the land needs healing. Isn't that something, anything that needs healing? And I was looking in my studies that it, 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 the land is sick. The land is, excuse my vernacular, but the land is vomiting of evil from evil men and even evil women that are doing some, and the only way can we can fight this thing, we must be consistent in praying to God. And we need to be, we need to pray without ceasing. And in everything, God answers prayer. But we got to make sure that we're in the right position for God to answer prayer. We must, we've got to ask God, God, I can I acknowledge my my transgression and my sins are ever before me. Look down my faults and see my every day. Then we go to God in sincere prayer. We have to not acknowledge who we are first. But prayer is what we need. What can we do? What can we do as humans here on, on this earth about all the things that's going on in, in Washington, D.C. and all the things that are going on in Congress, the things that went on. You got people saying that 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 that, that riot over at Congress it didn't happen. I don't understand that. I saw that with my own eyes, and then you have you have thousands of people, and people on television say that didn't happen. That the people were not rioting. The people went over there. They just went there to take a, a stroll through the Capitol and see what was going on. That's not true. They need our prayers because they've been tricked by Satan. That's what he does. He will trick you. He will fool you. But we need to keep prayer uh, always on our lips. And that's what he's telling. He's exhorting these Thessalonians to pray consistently. Pray without ceasing. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I read about it. I see it. It's impossible to go walk around. Yeah, you can pray. You can pray. It doesn't mean that prayer uh, repetitiously or continue without a break, but you can pray. Just, you can have mercy. You see that person that's with a sign, if you don't have a dollar or two to give them, you can say, Lord, have mercy on them. If they're out there in the streets with a sign, there's got to be something wrong. It doesn't necessarily mean, necessarily mean that the person, um, they're going to take my $5 and buy drugs. That's not your call. If you've been led to bless them, bless them. If you don't have a, a monetary gift, then you have a prayer. Have mercy on them, Lord. 
But as a country, I'm, I'm thinking more about our city. We have people we didn't vote for. Uh, we don't think they would have made a good this or good that. But we need to pray that God will intercede in their lives and God will touch their hearts and turn them around. Let them not do things for vain glory. We need to pray. Yeah, I, I look at a lot of pastors that are, are holding prayer meetings and and everything, and uh, I think that's wonderful. And I, I I even call in to some of these prayer services. I love uh, the Wednesday prayer services, six a.m. at the Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. I love to hear Dr. Marcus Cosby intercede for the entire world through prayer, and he encourages people from whatever church you go to whoever you are if you're up at 6 a.m and you don't have another prayer service call in and listen and join in the prayer services but then they pray all day on wednesday and and that's what we need consistency in our prayer are we consistent in our prayers are we consistent praying for one another that the things would be done uh decently in order according to the will of God. That's what Paul is doing here. And he says in verse, in verse 12, if I go back, he says, and we urge you, brethren, to recognize those who labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. Be at peace among yourselves. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn those who are unruly, Comfort the faint hearted. I think we talked about comfort last week. Uphold the weak. Be patient with all. See that no one renders evil for evil to anyone. But always pursue what is good, both for yourselves and for all. You pray for you. You're looking for the good for yourself and for others. And then it says, he admonishes, he exhorts the people. Rejoice always pray without ceasing in everything in everything give thanks for this is the will of god in christ jesus for who for you here's your opportunity that is for you and for those that you call on the name of the lord in behalf of don't be stingy do not quench the spirit do not despise prophecy that's the whole thing Hold fast what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. These are things that God wants us to do to keep ourselves in preparation for prayer. We need to be prayer. This is not, we, you can't, you can't do anything at all. Uh, voting, I, I've been a voter ever since I was able to vote, started voting. I believe in voting. I don't believe in voting because people uh, there are people who died for us to have the right to vote. That's true. But voting is, is how we are heard. But along with voting, standing in line at the, at the polling place, I need God to guide me in my voting, make sure that my choice is his choice, my Lord. My choice must be God's choice. Talk to God about who. If you didn't vote for uh, uh, Whitmire and you voted for uh, the lady who I say is one of the hardest working black women I know, and you you pray for both of them, you pray that God will intercede. You want God to get the glory out of your life and out of the lives of others. That's why we're here, and it's it's so important how we are that we pray one for the other. And that's the only way that we're going to get anywhere. We're going to get anything done. We must talk to God. We must have a look. Not, let's not just wait till Sunday. Let's not wait till Tuesday to pray. You know, uh, we need to pray. And it says, the, the scripture says, pray in the spirit. And pray on, on all occasions with all kinds of prayer. Request, let your request be made known. You know, be alert. I mean, when you pass by on the freeway and you see a car on the side of the road and people are pray. 
Why are you driving? God, I love what my wife says when she does prayer here at the house with us. And we, you know, Reverend Johnson does not do all the praying, the family praying. I got I got a wife here and I got a daughter. We even Marshall, he leads us in prayer. And he'll ask you, is it my turn? But I love what she said when she says, God, as we drive to and fro up and down these dangerous highways, God, we need you to be the unseen driver in our cars. I love that. I love that. God, you be the unseen driver in our car. You know, be alert and always keep on praying for all of God's people. Ephesians 6 and 18 says that. First Thessalonians 5 and 7, our scripture tonight says that, that we need to pray without ceasing. Is in the, if is in the, it is a prayer, if anyone among you is in trouble, let them pray. James 5, 13. You know, it says, be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Romans 12 and 12. You can look at these. And the Bible tells us we shouldn't be anxious for anything. But in every situation, by prayer and supplication, King James says, this is in prayer and petition with thanksgiving. Let present, let your request be made known unto God. Philippians 4 and 6. This prayer draws us closer and nearer to God. It draws us closer and nearer to God. Uh, we're just supposed to pray. I hear him saying, I heard the late C.G. Wilkins say that Jesus said, prayer binds us together. Prayer, uh, it's our duty that we should pray one for the other. You know, we're praying because we're supposed to. It's, it's just not enough to motivate us. But the truth is that prayer is much more than a rule. It's, that, it's not just a rule. It's what God had ordained that we do. That we pray, talk to God. I like talking to God. I sit here at my table sometimes. Everybody, we've had our coffee, we had our breakfast. Everybody's going to their various uh, areas in the house. And, and, and I'm sitting there talking to God. God, he prayed. He prayed. Read, and read your book. He was in the Garden of Gethsemane praying. Difficult times. Don't only pray in difficult times. Pray that God, now I noticed something that it's, you know, uh, we pray sometimes. We pray for the sick and we pray for the shut in. We've been, I've been hearing that all my life. There's nothing wrong with that. God bless. That's, that's beautiful. Uh, it, it, but we need to pray for those. Do you know God is in the process or is healing people, those we've been praying. Thank God for that he's healing. And we know healing is on the way. We thank God for those that he's already healed and they're up and moving around again. And that's what we want. We want to pray and we want to be continuous without sitting. And you know what? I know this and I know you know this. There's always something to be in prayer about, not just for, about. There's always something to be in prayer about. And then there's always something to be in prayer for, or someone to be in prayer for. That boss that don't respect you and treat you real bad, pray for him, pray for him. The Bible says pray for those who despitefully would, what, Reverend? You mean to tell me I got to pray for that? Uh, mm, no, no, child of God, Christian believer. Yes. So the book says, pray, didn't it say? It says in the Bible, pray for those who just, what? Use you. You know, and it, it is, it's beautiful what God wants us to do. And that's, that's what we're about. It says, here in verse 23, and there's blessings involved in prayer. It says, now may the God of peace, this is the closing, Paul is closing. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. Lord have mercy. Sanctify you completely. And may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's coming. There's some discussion in this chapter about coming, who, when he's coming, 
He's coming and we won't even know when he's coming. He says, he who calls you is faithful, also will do it. And he says, brethren, verse 25, pray for us. Greet all the brethren with a holy kiss. I charge you by the Lord that this epistle be read to all the holy brethren. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Paul is telling these Thessalonians, this is what you need to do. Greet everybody with a holy kiss. There was a time when you, I, I used to saw that. I used to see that as a child growing up in the church. That folk greeted each other with a holy kiss. And they loved each other. There wasn't nothing going on. But prayer is what we need to do. We need to intercede, intercessory prayer, not only for us, but for others. To intercede for all men, no matter what stage in life they're in, no matter where, what they look like, what their clothes look like, we need to be in prayer. And then we want people, our brothers and sisters, to be in prayer for us. You may not see me from Sunday to Sunday to Sunday. That don't mean that you can't pray for me. I may not see you one Sunday after night, but that doesn't mean that I'm not supposed to be in prayer for you. Pray for us. Pray for the Johnson family over here. I'll be praying when I pray for the Pilgrimage family, the Pilgrimage Church at large. Pray and then God will sometimes bring names to my uh, my my prayer, to my mind, and I may be call their names. Uh, uh, who I would, God, hear my prayer on their behalf. Prayer is important to Jesus. It was his lifeline and his connection to the Heavenly Father. Did you hear what I just said? Prayer was important to Jesus. It was his lifeline to the Father. His connection with the Heavenly Father. Do you know prayer is our lifeline, our connection with Jesus Christ? It equipped him it equipped him for the battles he was about to face. That's us. Prayer equips us for the battles in life that we are about to face. We're going we gonna to have some battles. We're going to have some battles in life. But if we pray without ceasing, and we can, Lord, help me. I don't know what's ahead. Only you know what is ahead. So you equip me for what's ahead. Strengthen me. And I go before me. You know. And, and 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 help me. Then we need we want God to sustain us. It sustained him. It sustained him that will sustain us also. And if you know, as a Christian, if the goal of a Christian is to be come more like Jesus, and that's what we said, want to be more like him, similar to that's the word, similar to, to be similar to God. I want to be more and more like Jesus. Look the word of similitude and, 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 and become more like Jesus. Uh, that process should be include imitating his action and living out his words. As we pray, we will become more like Jesus. And we will find that prayer changes. Don't it don't don't only change things, and I'm through. I'm only through. It only changes things. Prayer changes us. Ooh, I'm about to get excited. Prayer changes Julius Johnson. Prayer changes Julius Johnson. Julius Johnson is not who he used to be. But thank God, because I had a mother who would look at me and she said, I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you. And I had a father who's a deacon. He said, son, he said, you need to calm down. You need to calm down, young man. I'm praying for you, boy. I'm praying for you, boy. And I thank God that they intercede for me. For me, he prayed in, in John chapter 17. Look what God prayed. He, he prayed for those who would believe on him, and he prayed for those that all of them may be one. He prayed that to, to John and John. Father, just as you are in me, I am in you. John 17, 21. Read it at your leisure. John chapter 17. Read the whole thing. But Prayer helps us become one with the Father. Isn't that important? That's big. It sounds, you know, when I was reading it, I thought about how big that is. It helps us to become one with the Father and have the kind of relationship. Don't, 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 I know everybody on this line has a relationship with Jesus Christ. 
with the Father. Isn't that something? And it's unlike a relationship with me or unlike a relationship, but a relationship, a holy connection with Jesus Christ. And we keep that connection through prayer. And the Bible prayers in our, in our lesson tonight, that we've got to continue. We've got to pray without ceasing. We must pray without ceasing. I'm going to stop right there, Brother Turner. God bless all of you. We pray that you've gotten the word and that you've been spiritually motivated by the lesson on prayer tonight. And there's so much more to that. God bless you. I ask that you pray for me during this month, or during the after this month, that God will continue to give me something that I can share with us that will be helpful to us and that we can we can use in our everyday life. God bless you.